Okay, everyone, welcome to the next at uh, next level Dota stream without Ranxious this time. He's AWOL once again, as he normally does in mornings. He's not really a morning person, so that, that's a thing. Comes out at night. Uh, at least his Steam goes, the idol gets removed from his in game Dota as uh, about 2 o'clock rolls around. In fact, speaking of the devil, he's calling me, so I'm going to interrupt my intro just for this guy. You are on the stream. Hi, Ranxious. You sound newly awoken. Radiant <laughs> team. Late night. Dire team. Uh, there. You know, there was a little, how how uh the they you know there's like a group of people that keep streaming and they or uh, keep screaming like and so it was kind of happening earlier and so like eh I'll just start it earlier it's not that big a deal and uh, yeah but anyways I'll talk to you. Uh, talk to you in like 40 minutes whenever this is over you gonna be there yeah average it had just started Dire team ban. okay I will bye GTFO Ranxious the call was already hung up I'm not that much of a badass alright the remaining. Call to arms. The call to war has begun, and the heroes have begun their choosing. Well, the heroes are being chosen. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's look. I don't know actually who was the first to pick. I'm guessing the Tidehunter, I believe. And and the two kind of uh, priests slash shadow priests, witch doctor type people, Dazzle and witch doctor get chosen from the Radiant side. I love both these heroes. Dazzle is one of my favorites. I think Shallowgrave is really, really good. The mini stun being removed from Poison Touch is hardcore, but really not that hardcore. It's it, the little shifts like that will remove him meta, from the meta, but it won't make him any less powerful. And I think pros pros are more are too prone to like waivers like that when money's on the line. They let little changes like that affect how they pick. And so I obviously think that Dazzle is an amazing hero. And Pugna being banned out is really good, I think, against the fact that both of these guys want to cast a lot. And, well, Pugna's been more acknowledged here in the last couple days just as someone who can counter a lot of the heroes being chosen. And so early bans coming out from him. Not so many picks as much as bans, I'd say. Uh, but anyways, yeah, Ancient Apparition being banned out by, or being picked by the Dire. Tidehunter, Ancient Apparition, all right, solid heroes. Good first picks. The Radiant side has just, I don't know. It, very versatile heroes right now, like Dire in terms of, pick. it's they're different. Dazzle's definitely different, as, as especially as a first pick. He can get countered, and that's why we saw the Ancient Apparition get get picked. Dazzle gets countered a little bit by Ancient Apparition. Uh, Dazzle can like Shalgrave and kind of prevent some of the stacks, but if Ancient, if AA gets an Ags at any point, it's really bad for him. And uh, also Axe is on the board, and Axe just makes Dazzle literally do almost nothing. <laughs> so Axe is pretty good. He rarely gets picked, but I, it's always fun to watch an Axe. Juggernaut being the pick from the Radiant. I'm liking I'm liking uh, the Radiant's like uh, verse. Not I keep saying versatility, but the fact that they're unique is what I'm looking for. They have a healing ward and a lot of heals coming from Dazzle and Witch Doctor. In fact, all three of their heroes so far have heals. So look at that. It's the heal team, ladies and gentlemen. We're seeing it happen. Uh, Viper and Brewmaster being banned out. Pugna and Weaver on the opposing side. So let's uh, let's see what uh, what in fact. I don't really know what to say about the Dyer's draft right now. It's just kind of I don't know. I guess straightforward. Wraith King being picked up. Can't say if it's a support or carry. Uh, it's been hopping between both and in different circumstances. It definitely works in both, and so that's why it's a versatile pick. I'm surprised that, actually now that I say that that it isn't picked a little bit earlier. Uh, it is counterable. Man, anything with a mana drain is going to be really good against him. Anything that gets a quelling, or not a quelling blade, but a fusal blade. And uh, so a Naga, a PL, something like that. Um, but you could pick a Wraith King and then just bait out the illusion hero that wants to, you know, use the defusal blade and then get something like a Kunkka. We saw Kunkka yesterday completely destroy Naga in terms of the illusion power. And a, a PL would be the same way, just cleave through all of them. And... So that's, that's one thing you could do. And it, the Naga ended up winning, but that was because they had actually a really good early game phase, and they had a Naga Wraith King, I believe. And so their late game potential was really good. And it was, uh, yeah, pretty much against like a Faceless Void Kunkka. And the Kunkka got tons of farm using a Blink Dagger to X himself and then blink out into the creep waves when he's defending a high ground and just pushing the counter-pushing the wave really well. 
And that was like, there's how can you push up against that unless you really are calculated about it. Centaur War Runner being the pick from the Radiant. So they're going to push towers, they're going to heal a lot, and now they can dive even more with Stampede, with the tankiness. Interesting lineup coming out from the Radiant team. I'm, I'm feeling the beatbox starting to come out of me. I, I want to do it, but the pressure's on, it's, you know, streams live, and so who knows? We'll see if I <laughs> beatbox today. I have no ranks to stop me from beatboxing. Slark being the pick. Two fish monsters on the dire side. Nice. If they get a Slardar, that'd be manly and slippery and fishy. Yes. So now we're nearing the end of the draft, and there's going to be the next last set of bands. But Len, now we can start to see what these teams generally do. Yeah, I've already spoken what the Radiant side really does. They can walk up to a tower. They've got a lot of heals that sustain uh, a good amount of stuns and a good amount of damage. So I think it's well-rounded. It's it's interesting to see a team that, that gets a lot of heals because we don't see that much at all. You don't see stacking heals. That's something that gets ignored. Like push drafts come out and tanky drafts come out, but heal drafts, I have not seen that much, especially in the pro scene. But the dire side, they can dive a little bit. The Slark is active. They got a good amount of stuns, good amount of team fight. Well rounded, I suppose. An Invoker and Storm Spirit banned out, and Wind Ranger being picked in the last side, last uh, last slot. Wind Ranger, off lane, yeah. Mid, who's gonna mid? I guess it could really change up. It could Centaur off lane, Wind Ranger mid, or vice versa. Aggro try could be uh, what comes out from the Radiant safe lane. Uh, one of the safe lane centaur, safe lane wind ranger, and depending on who's the off lane or tide hunter, most likely, if we've seen what's happened in the past, then it'll be wind ranger is probably who they'll pit against the tide hunter because centaur's not going to do that good. Uh, we've seen centaur, tide hunter a lot, and depending on the game that I'm trying to remember, it went one way or the other. Like it actually wasn't as convincing as I thought. But Tidehunter is just one who's known to be really good against all, like all melee solos. It's just like the best lane he could ever ask for. So if they put a Wind, Wind, Wind Ranger against him, he'll have definitely a harder time. Ten seconds <clears throat> and yeah, the Centaur could go mid. Against the DP though, that's going to be tough. So now they're almost kind of forced to put the cent Centaur against the Tidehunter is my best guess. But the Radiant might want to do an aggressive tri lane against this Wraith King, so we'll see if the Wraith King dodges or if it's a laning. Well, now actually, it's probably a yeah, it's probably a support Wraith King now that I look at it. So Slark being the farmer, and Slark does want that early farm. So if you go aggressive against him, yeah, that's one thing you could do. But you'd be going against an AA and a uh, AA Slark and a Wraith King. So that's a good amount of like that's a strong tri lane. You've got the chilling touch. That's the main thing. You have a stun. You've got a pounce. Slark is pretty active in the early game. He wants like quick levels though. He wants to get his pounce, essence shift, and dark pack before he really wants to get active. And in a tri lane, it takes a while to get those level three, um, well those levels to get to level three. So let's call out who's playing who. The two B pros here in the RD two L. I do it for Allah is in the solo off lane tide hunter and DP being played by Anexi, almost like Anexi. Uh, let's see, Griffin playing the Slark. Omer, uh, Omer, he keeps moving. I don't know if that's an R and an E or two M's. Oh, Omernev, that's what I'm going for. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure it's Omernev. Playing on the Ancient Apparition and the Wraith King being played by Ensphere, who played really well like the last couple of days that I've seen him, uh, if not just the last day I've seen him. So really, really, uh, yeah, definitely impressive. Dick Butt <laughs> playing the centaur. Thank you for allowing me to say Dick Butt on the stream and give me a reason to say that. In the mid lane, Wind Ranger being played. Wind Ranger being played by Bonanzo, the guy who beat me in one v one. Rip in peace. Next, on vouch. Pentos playing the Dazzle Juggernaut being played by Naxul. Naxul. These are some exotic names coming out from this like trolly team, literally. Troll Lodo. Wow. Speaking of trolls, playing the Witch Doctor. I think Witch Doctor is kind of like a troll. Yeah, he's like a troll. Pretty sure he's a... Uh, because, like, this is the old... Um, World of, Dazzle's the old War, World of Warcraft character, or Warcraft 3, like the Dark Spear troll leader. I forget what his name was, but he was pretty cool. But this is not time to talk about lore. This is talk, time to talk about ganks on the mid lane with a DD Wraith King who does get spotted out <laughs> by the Vision. It is daytime. That's not a place that... <laughs> I'm Pingu. <laughs> That's funny. 
Yeah. So let's see. Yeah, it's actually not going to be. Uh, it's going to be a defensive trialing on the radiant side. I, I thought it'd be aggro, but maybe they were going to dodge that because they would be going once again against that ancient apparition. But now the centaur is going to be going against that really tough trialing, and, and this is going to be really tough for them for sure. Uh, yeah. So a request coming out apparently to tell this guy when the next lobby's up, which I will do exactly that. So man, who's going to? Which offlane's going to have more trouble? I think that. I think this Radiance tri lane is going to get the kill. I'm predicting it right now uh, because... Oh, no, but I actually take that back. I thought that Pounce was on the Radiant side. Pounce. I think the the people with Pounce is actually going to get the kill. So they're going to Pounce. They're going to get all those Chilling Touch hits in, and that's going to be bad. So we'll see how that actually happens. Depends on how careful the Centaur plays. Let me get last hits up because I'm a noob. Super noob status. This is my first game that I've casted today, so this is my <laughs> uh, warm-up. So we'll uh, see how bad I do at calling out crap. I gotta open my eyes, drink some more coffee. I did get half a cup down, but it takes like takes a game. It really always does. <laughs> so yeah, good thing I'm, the, I'm not in the big leagues yet because I would be choking. Choke. Next is gonna choke. But yeah, all right. Let's looking at like items. All right, and skills that are being uh, skilled up here. Chilling touch, good. Um, I would say that ice vortex. Well, actually, uh, the pounce, uh, the pounce really works really well with cold feet. <laughs> yeah, uh, just talking to the uh, just for noobs um, guy that was messaging me. He keeps distracting me. You're distracting me, man. Stop doing it. I'm super bad at multitasking. No, no, I should be good at multitasking. This is good practice. Thank you. Thank you for the practice. Haste ring going for the wind ranger. And as far as last hits goes, in the mid lane, it's 12 to 11, really even. That sounds about right. They're both really good at last hits. Uh, I still need to figure out a way to, to mute uh, spectator chat. You can mute all chat. Oh, maybe top, there's something going on here. Yes, I didn't miss first blood. Yes! Centaur gets owned by the Chilling Touch Pounce combo. My prediction was absolutely correct. The, the Wraith Fire Blast probably came out into a Pounce, into a Chilling Touch. Two powerful guys. It's really, really good. And uh, this is the what happens when this is, this is what it's interesting is in my games yeah the tri lane goes against the the solo lane that's like what will happen in pubs a lot but like in pros it almost always happens where the solo goes against the solo you know what I mean it's weird that they're able to just like know where the tri lane is going to be and or they dodge if they see it so they 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 make a priority to like want a certain lane setup and centaur you know he's going against this tri lane and. He's gotten up to level two and a half, but <laughs> I'm not gonna let you distract me this time. Shit, I already did. <laughs> Go back to the cast. My, my, the time at which you distract me is getting lower and lower every time you message me. Uh, <laughs> but let's see. So yeah, Centaur um, can't just do much against this, and he's got th level three now, uh, trying to sap a, a little bit of XP from this neutral pulk. Um, but yeah, so he's just gonna have such a hard time against that tri lane and the radiance tri lane is more about like yeah they've got the heal so they'll be able to push this tower really well but now the tide hunter trying to stack the ancients he does have one stack and he's actually going to get this stack once more despite the fact that he pulled it a little bit later uh but not too much and so that's going to be a good stack for him and he's leveling anchor smash so i do it for allah it's going to be able to get a good bank of xp and gold in just a little bit here this is looking really good for the Tide Hunter. this is just the strength of the dire tide hunter you can't do this on the radiant so the, the people taking into account, um, the, the captains, props to the captains for taking into account these little things going, hey, if there's a Shadow Fiend, you know, if it, we're Radiant, we can get a Shadow Fiend and ju uh, jungle these easy camps really well, uh, or the medium and hard camp, I guess I should say, neutral camps, what I was looking for. And if you're on the Dire, Tidehunter can do the same thing in the offlane, stack those camps and just, yeah, make use of that. No, Centaur trying to do what he can in Wraith King zoning mount. He's got to be so scared. They've already got some kills, and now there's going to be the items coming out from the Slark. He's going to have phase boots pretty soon, or treads. Well, I should say treads. Phase is boots is... Well, I suppose phase boots is good, too, but treads is mostly what I think Slarks go. For the Essence Shift procs. And there's no kill potential coming out of the Radiance tri lane. The I agree with this Dazzle's choices. He's going well-rounded. You want to get all three of these because the value point in each is really, really good, and you don't want to wait till uh, level four, usually. Now... Dazzle skills are really hard to decide on. It really depends on who you're going against. Poison Touch is good to level if the opposing team has a lot of melee. Which, the dire... Eh, I mean, like, Slars can purge it, so that's the thing. I wouldn't bank on Poison Touch, to be honest. I'd really go into Shallow Grave or Shadow Wave. Shallow Grave or Shadow Wave. <laughs> 
They just have the similar names, and in the mid lane there might be something happening because the Dire is rotating, and now they're rotating behind. Bonanzo isn't going to be able to spot it out this time. This is looking really bad as Bonanzo is actually going on the DP, but she might actually get killed here by the Windrunner. One more last hit, the stun comes out. Now the Colty, but the DP has to be really careful. She bottles up, and that's the death of Bonanzo here in the mid lane, our second blood. And cool, I'm not tripping over my tongue that much. Seems to be quite all right. Coffee's kicking in. Let me take another swig just to make sure that it continues to do that. Do exactly that. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Ugh, all right. Oof, cold coffee. Delicious. Level two, no, level one poison touch just harassing this Tidehunter, but he has no Radiance fear of death here in the, in the bottom lane. Just the, the, they don't have the stuns, right? Like, Poison Touch is a slow, but it doesn't stun for until for like ever. And then, uh, yeah, Witch Doctor just has level two paralyzing cask, but that's just not the stun you're looking for unless you have a really good timing with the, you know, waiting till there's only one creep left on the opposing creep wave, and then you throw it, and then it bounces between the enemy and the creep wave. But now, mid lane, there is a grouped up the diary here. I feel like I want to sneeze, so let me. Oh God, allergies! That that limbo, the like of uh, the limbo of being in between sneezing and not sneezing. Oh, it's the absolute worst, guys. I mean, sneezing is said to be one-tenth of an orgasm in terms of pleasure equivalent. And, you know, being denied that one-tenth of an orgasm, it's just like, it's like being blue-balled. So, one-tenth of a blue ball, basically, is what's going on here in my nose. God, I'm fucking weird. <laughs> but in the top lane, Centaur goes down to the Slark and the Wraith King combo. That, that only needs two here in order to kill the Centaur now. And the wards are diminishing on both sides, so you see just complete blackness here. So the ganks are strong. Nighttime, no wards. <clears throat> it's too spooky for me here in the RD2L. Casted by Nex. Thanks for joining me. Uh, once again, I'll take this moment to say thank you. Tell your friends, follow if you want to see more. I am going to be consistently casting, for good or for worse, guys. Whether or not it succeeds, I'm going to be casting every day, so we'll see what happens in a year from now. Whether I am just a hobo without uh, any fan base or a legit next level Toby. We'll see. But anyway, once again, thanks for, for tuning in. Radiant Top lane pushing the tower. I actually missed that, that uh, message from this guy because he was too big. Alright, I can't read that. It's too long. I, I, gotta, I gotta be dedicated to my viewers. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, just for noobs. Just for noobs, that's your name. <laughs> I want to know your actual name. You're, you just have your Twitch like channel, but I want to know if, that, if that's your actual name. But anyways, sorry. <laughs> I just get distracted. I, I have to read everything. That's what's going on. But yeah, it's pretty much uh, no action here happening, so I'm able to get distracted. I'm able to go on tangents. And I haven't missed a kill yet, so that's knock on wood. Fuck, my table isn't wood. It's plastic. I'm pretty sure that, that means you get bad luck, like extra bad luck if you knock on plastic. And I'm pretty sure I also just made that up. But it sounds like it might be something that happens if there were actually superstitious things, which I am not a superstitious person. I don't believe in karma. Sue me. I'm, a, I'm kind of a literal dude. Okay, so there's the pounce on the centaur. And the, blast, the uh, Wraithfire Blast is going to follow, but this is only two. I don't think they have enough to kill him. He is slowed by the Wraithfire Blast, but are they going to dive? Yes, he has pounce up. The cooldown was just too short. Look at that. He has it rank four, so he, pro he definitely wouldn't have been able to get that kill if it wasn't for ranking pounce. And I agree with this. I am okay with this. Next next level seal of, appro of approval. <laughs> next level seal of, of approval. Too good. Too good. No, that's too good is the other casting studio. This is next level. Not too good. So let's just be clear about that. Yeah, so anyway, back on chat. Yeah, I, I have like I, an idea how to mute chat. Uh, there's like a console command, I believe, that will like, no matter what, take away Dota TV chat, whether it's spectator or otherwise, so I'll give that a shot. Maybe in between casts today. And a confirmed Ranxious will be here for the next cast. Uh, so yeah, there I won't do a solo cast next cast, so just so you know. The more you know. We all learned something. Let's look at the items. Let's see, so Witch Doctor just boots. I was looking at top lane. Same thing for Dazzle. Ancient Apparition, yeah, 5 roll. He has actually Tranquils. I don't know if I 100% agree with this. Ancient Apparition's kind of mana intensive. Like, his ult doesn't hurt, uh, doesn't cost that much mana, but it really, like, the Chilling Touch, and you want to throw out Ice Vortex spam. You know, Tranquils are fast, yes, and you, you get the regen, but does your team need the mana regen is the question. Here's the thing, yeah. If you look at it from a solo basis, no, no flame, and just talking about specific things, 
and there might be some action here mid, so that might interrupt me, but I'll continue to try to get my message across, is that, yeah, on a, if you were just looking at yourself as a support, do you need it? Yeah, maybe you don't. Maybe Ancient Apparition doesn't. Maybe he'll get some other items to supplement his mana regen, but, you know, does your team need a DP? He's pretty mana intensive, and she does have mana boots as well, and Tidehunter, you know, he needs mana boots, and oh, wow, he gets actually ulted. Surprisingly, I don't miss that kill, uh, <laughs> which is cool, but just gets solo ulted. Um, but in the mid lane, Bonanzo's getting a little, ooh, a little impatient. He actually gets a level four power shot on and the shackle on this. And there's the stampede as well. He's gonna dive this, but it's stacked with the wind run. Now he's gonna get those right clicks, and he's got one, two, maybe one left. There's no regen coming out from Ancient Apparition, and it is enough to kill him. But now Bonanzo, the dive is too strong. The manliness, manliness is there, and he goes down after getting a kill, feeding the DP a kill, and all in all, one for one. That's uh, what even, but uh, yeah, I guess it's even. The top lane, this this is the deadest Dazzle I've ever seen. He doesn't even get a Shallow Grave off because the Wraith Fire Blast was just leveled up too much. The nuke damage, 150, is just a little surprisingly strong. Now, of course, doesn't scale nearly as much as other supports at rank 3 nukes. But uh, that's kind of why he doesn't get played as support as much in, like, pub games because he isn't straight up, like, the nuke damage isn't, like, all there. But this is a support. He's just generally strong if he gets the levels and... It's always a good feeling when late game you have that Wraith King support because he's just going to be able to do more than than another support in most in most scenarios. That's the thing about melees. I feel like just Ice Frog has balanced melees as being generally stronger in stats and spell effectiveness in kit in, in kit role. Like what does the kit do? Uh, but it's harder to lane. So if you have melee supports, you're able to pull off melee supports usually by making ranged carries. Then, uh, then yeah, it's always more power to you. Uh, what's the button that brings up the loots it's somewhere around here? Uh, there it is. Yeah, F five. There it is. Cool. Today I learned. Yeah. So let's look at. Let's see. So Jug is probably saving up for something. Oh no, I thought that he has just more farm, but he actually only has phase. And a poor man's shield, 12 minutes in. That's not so bad. He's got a wand too, but he's not going to be rushing anything really big. He's certainly not going Midas. But uh, yeah, he might go that attack speed build that Ranxious and I have talked about. There was a post on Reddit that, on the fifth, like Dota 2 subreddit, um, that talked about the attack speed effectiveness on Jug, where like, the more attack speed he has, the more attacks he can do in his ult. And I think I missed a kill right here. Yeah, Witch Doctor got pincered by the Dire team. The Slark coming up that way. An Ancient Apparition Wraith King combo coming up from the stairs. But yeah, um, it showed that Mom, Mask of Madness, surprisingly, is by far, like hugely by far, the most uh, damage per gold item in the game. And Mjolnir and Maelstrom being the follow-up too. Because attack speed in his ult is what gives him the damage. He gets basically free attacks, as if he's just attack moving without impedance whatsoever. Magic, immunity, uh, attack moving. And so that's what Omni Slash plus attack speed does. And it also assumes that you get ag. So if you go that build, it's attack speed and it's ags. And it is really strong. If you have people on the opposing team that are really tanky that you want to be able to solo kill, or you get a blink dagger and you think you can chain your ultimate, getting attack speed plus ags will be able to kill one, two, three, possibly even four people. It is so strong. It can kill anyone, really. Like tankiness. I've I've showed I've had like a centaur with five hearts. Literally five hearts. And it will like solo kill um, with all that uh, with just in one omni slash. So it's really, really strong. But anyways. That's just a, a, a kind of a cool um, new item build that's I've seen on Jug, and maybe someone else found it out before. But ancient, this witch doctor is definitely the deadest dude ever. Getting caught out here, and oh yeah, I should probably close this menu because it's kind of in the way. But I was kind of looking at uh, the item builds, and wow, uh, Jug is able to purchase a point booster and an ochre club in the time that I was speaking that whole time. Uh, Bonanza going maelstrom, it appears. Ice blast being sent to the bottom, but this mid tower is definitely going down the way of the dire who's grouped up and in full force. Exorcism is uh, off cooldown, so. That is on the yeah, on the menu to be eaten and just dished out to the radiant team. It's a it's a spicy dish. Exorcism it takes your towers. There's there's no pun I can make off that. Slark comes from the shadows. Look at that. He just was like, <laughs> gotta go fast right onto the Wind Ranger, and Bonanza goes down. The tower now is ripe for the taking. Exorcism is newly popped, and Juggernaut's being 
kind of defended um, here at the bot tower, so he's not going to get that free tower as well. And the Dyer's just taking a better trade out of this. They are getting the, the mid tower, tier two, tier one, tier two is going down to the exorcism. There's nothing to defend it. Wish Doctor's here, Dazzle's down here, and Jug as well. He's just getting his items. He's like, all right, well, we're going to lose map control, but I'm going to TP in now. And the Dyer team choose the cautions, better side of Valor, and they leave defending. The new exorcism was kind of going to expire there in just a second. And uh, this felt the danger. So good, good uh, game sense coming out from the Dyer. They left as soon as Radiant was like there. So well played execution. Well, well, uh, yeah, well, well done. <laughs> That's <laughs> that was the a complex word I was looking for. Oh my brain! I need to crank the gears into place. Yeah, it's always the first game. Yes. So let's see here. What is next? Net worth. Jugged surprisingly... Well, I guess not surprisingly. He has been solo farming, but look at the kills going the way of the Dire and look at the towers as well. So 2,000... 3,000 gold in... No, it's actually 2,000 gold uh, in way of equivalent tower money going the way of the Dire. So, yeah. Dire's feeling really good right now. What's the Tidehunter got? He still doesn't have his Blink Dagger. Not even close, unless it's on the Courier. So I actually completely take that back. <laughs> it's on the Courier. So... He's going to have his Blink Dagger, boom, Mana Boots, Blink Dagger, and uh, all right, so there's a lot of Mana Boots on the Dire team. I take that back. So there's at least two. That's the main thing. Um, that's all right. For a pushing team, three is like the tops, and that's it always feels good to have three Mana Boots, but Tranquils, hmm. Like, the speed is good, but, like, if, if you really want to, like, a, like movement, I mean, Phase is, like, going to give you a lot of movement speed as well, and Phase can't be canceled by being auto-attacked or auto-attacking yourself. So, and you get right-click out of it. Uh, Tranquils just seem like a temporary solution. Kind of just, it's always like early game, and does an Ancient Apparition really need health regen in the early game? Sorry to harp on you, uh, Omer, Omernev. But you, you have two tangos in your inventory, which means you haven't really needed the mana regen so much. But uh, yeah, I just like to point out things like that. I, I like to get critical, I like to theorycraft, and so it's, it's not ever shots fired against anyone. I just like to think about the optimal solution in any given scenario, and the motivations behind why you make decisions. That is what makes me entertained by Dota. The infinite possibility that is Dota. The ultimate conglomeration and amalgamate of decisions weighed on your shoulders, testing you at every corner. Yes, that is Dota. Dota is hyper-stimulation. That's why I call it, uh, why, why that's how I describe it, why it's fun because you have so many decisions. You have seven decisions you need to make and you can only make two of them and you make you have to make them correctly. For instance, you just have you just have so much burdened on you and you, you know, the experience just shows straight through in every decision you make. Love it. Love Dota, esports, <laughs> digital sports. Yes. A pause because Slark is DC'd here at the top secret shop. Well, side shop. Is this, a, is this considered a secret shop? It's more like, I guess, a side shop. It's the official name. Secret shops are these guys, of course. Yes, 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 indeed. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, mana boots. The only thing to Dazzle's name, Dazzle wants to get, like, a lot of items. He wants to get, like, mana boots, mech, four staff, wand. All of those things are so good in terms of... Well, everything except the mana boots are good in terms of coming out of a shallow grave. Like the ideal post shallow grave, like when it t the timer runs out, especially if you're shallow grave using yourself, you want to force stab yourself, you want a mech, you want a shadow wave, and you want a like wand. And through all that, you can just get full HP coming out of a, sh a shallow grave. And um, yeah, so that's just like what he really wants to save people. I've had games where I've just saved everyone because I got so much farm early uh, just from kills and assists and getting like actual last hits in lanes where I could. And now there's the engagement here on the top lane. Here comes the Ice Blast and it's gonna hit only two right there, but DP has her ult, but there's the Ravage as well. It's hitting everyone and now Dazzle's really close. He hasn't popped Shallow Grave, he has 10 HP, but the Dire are chasing. The Stampede's up now. The Radiant's able to run away because of that, but Slark's on the chase. He has the attempt move speed, but he gets seen by the Slark, so that's it. And and now Centaur is diving under the tier 1 tower. Hopefully he'll be safe. The hoof stomp was uh, optimistic, trying to stun, but the, the spirits were there. And the TP was actually coming out from what I think was the Wind Ranger right after the pounce. But yeah, that was uh, really well played by the Dire. They, were, they had the initiation there. They had Exorcism. They have the Ravage. And there's not much the Radiant can do against that. The Jug's farmed, but yeah, it's still only a rank 1 Omni Slash. And although he has Ags, 
Uh, it's, it's not going to feel really powerful until he gets that one more level. He is level 10 now. and But even besides that, if the Dyer groups up, he's not he doesn't have like the farm to make his Omni Slash really strong right now. And so it's not going to have a big impact on the Dyer. And Dyer has some tanky heroes. They got the DP, the Tidehunter, and the Wraith King. As well as the Slark, who can just Shadow Dance. And that's really good against the, the Juggolt. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of interesting. Um, like, for, for instance, if the if Jug tries to go on Slark and Slark's getting hit by the Omni Slash procs, he can just pounce away and then Shadow Dance. And now the Jug ult, unless the Jug has a Blink Dagger, it's not going to actually chain to other people. And that's totally, like, ideal scenario for the Slark, but... And it's not always going to happen. But it's just a good carry, and, well, Radiance doesn't have the strength right now. They have to have, like, good de uh, Death Wards. They have to weave before the Death Ward to reduce the damage to make Death Ward do more damage. See, they're, 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 as far as the physical damage synergy goes, they actually have a lot of synergy on their team. They have the Wind Ranger who's going to be pumping out a lot of damage with that Maelstrom, but mainly... Oh, I gotta stop talking because this Dazzle's getting gone on. There's the Death Ward doing a little bit of damage against DP, but now they're gonna outrange it. But actually, Slark came, almost came back in range of it, but now he's gonna Shadow Dance, and that's all. Well, actually, his Shadow Dance up in one second, but he's gonna run away. And back on the back lines, this Windrunner is actually killing the Wraith King, Wraith King pro proccing the reincarnation. Now the, re the re engagement coming from the Dire. Now the Radiant are completely slowed. There's the pounce on a Wind Ranger, but the Wind Run was actually uh, was making it so that she missed a lot. But this is the deadest Witch Doctor ever. He's gonna go down Dezel trying to find what he can, but there's not gonna be nothing. Centaur and Dazzle, the Lone Rangers here. Actually, Jug's trying to go in. Maybe he'll use his ult, and there it is. It actually bounces to the creep wave. What an unfortunate set of events. He's going to spin to win, but it's actually going to be a spin to lose because he's going to get stunned up here. Just a second. There's the uh, the uh, slow coming out from, uh, from all the things. And yes, the Radiant are dead. The Radiant are dead. GG being called by Bonanzo. Wow, 2-16. to 16. Yeah, I mean, I could say that Radiant's... Uh, it's not a drafting problem, per se. I think the Radiant could have got active early and maybe done something, but they actually got gone on way too many times. The tri-lane didn't work, work so much. If you think about what the Radiant tri-lane accomplished, they didn't accomplish anything. The let, Let's think about what the Radiant tri-lane could have done. And this is not against them once again, but it's always in hindsight. Caster has that privilege, so talking about in hindsight and improving on our future games, the Radiant tri-lane didn't push the tower early. The Dazzle wasn't able to TP to other lanes to Shallow Grave to save people. Uh, they didn't pull like that many creep camps as far as I saw, so they didn't maximize farm. And even if they did maximize farm, that still isn't enough. A defensive tri lane who allows the Tide Hunter to stack Ancients like that and get XP and farm, but just gets farm themselves by pulling, stacking and pulling, that's an okay amount of XP, but unless you have a Sand King on your team or something that can jungle and make use of like the jungle as well and really optimize farm, as a defensive tri -line, you need to make something happen. You need to rotate, you need to gank, but they didn't have the best ganking lineup, so it might have come down to the draft, but the Radiant, 2-16, to 16, I think, at the end of the game, 2-18 to 18 or something like that, 2-19. to 19. Uh, right at the last uh, quick game, 20-minute game, going the way of, well, the team that had the most push once again wins. And thanks for watching. We will have another game. Ranxious will be joining me for the next, day, next game here in the RD2L Reddit Dota 2 League. Uh, I've been next at Next Level Dota. Stick around, and next game will come soon. And now for some music. No, I'm going to put on actual music. I'm not going to beatbox for you guys. Right now, anyways. <laughs> not yet.